It has taken less than two weeks for South Sudan to plunge to the brink of civil war. Hundreds have already died. Tens of thousands of people have fled their homes because of the fighting between factions loyal to two rival politicians. Despite diplomatic and UN peacekeeping efforts to end it, there's no sign it will stop anytime soon, and officials are struggling to provide food, shelter, and medical care to those who need it. We have received a lot of injured people here now, both soldiers and civilians. Our bed capacity is stretched and we don't have much resources now. We need a lot of help from the government because of these issues now. CNN's Arwa Damon arrived in South Sudan just a short time ago. Here's her first report from Juba. East African leaders have issued a warning to the warring factions following a meeting that took place on Friday, giving them four days to lay down their weapons or face the consequences. Exactly what those consequences are at this stage is unclear. South Sudan's government has said that it is willing to come to the negotiating table without preconditions. And the South Sudanese vice president is blaming rebel leader and former vice president Reik Mashad for the ongoing fighting. Victoria has put obstacles to this genuine call. By issuing preconditions, namely that ceasefire or truce cannot be reached unless a negotiation is conducted and added a number of obstacles. Among those potential obstacles is Mashar's demand that his political allies be released from jail. The South Sudanese government saying that they have to go through the judicial process. Meanwhile, the first of the U.N. troops have arrived in country. Just a handful, though, of the five and a half thousand that are expected. Their main focus, of course, to protect the civilian population, tens of thousands of which continue to seek shelter on U.N. bases. Doctors Without Borders also issuing a statement calling on both sides to lay down their weapons and allow them access into various areas where people are in desperate need of medical care. Just to give you an idea, we've only just arrived here in the capital, Juba. A curfew is in place. And even though the capital, relatively speaking to other parts of the country, has been stable, safe for the last week or so, civilians are still refusing to leave the U.N. compound here. That is just how terrified they are. That is just how traumatic the ordeal that they've gone through has been. Arwa Damon, CNN, Juba.